If our last video on airline secrets hasn't put you off flying altogether, good on you for giving this one a watch too. I suppose some of the things on this list might be quite reassuring to know, but some of them are pretty freaky. And yeah, it's more the latter. Let's just say I'd advise you don't watch this video whilst on a plane. Consider that my safety announcement. So we're now ready to take off and fly into our number 10. Amazing! Number 10. Lightning Strikes the thought of a plane getting hit by lightning is pretty scary, right? Well, I hate to break this one to you, but this one happens all the time. It's estimated that in the USA alone, each airplane will be struck by lightning once a year on average. Yikes. Luckily though, planes are built with this in mind. Planes have a copper outer layer, which has been designed to allow the lightning and the energy created by it to move along it without touching any other layers, so no damage is done. You may see a bright flash and hear a loud noise though, so there might be some damage done to your nerves. Number 9. Some seats are safer than others. In the unlikely event of a plane crash, of course, the chance of survival is unfortunately fairly slim. But did you know that the seat you're in can make a huge difference as to whether you're likely to survive or not? Tests show that passengers right at the front of the plane, i.e. those in first class, are more likely to suffer if there was an emergency. This is because of the likelihood that the cockpit may rip off from the front of the plane, leaving them immediately exposed. So maybe it's not worth paying all that money for some extra legroom and a cotton napkin. But before you people who usually fly economy get too cocky, you're not the safest ones on the plane either. Have you ever noticed that the attendant seats are often facing backwards? That's because it's significantly safer. In the event of sudden deceleration, these seats offer far better support. Not only that, but their seats also have better seat belts. Yes, that also makes them safer than you. So why aren't all of our seats facing to the rear with amazing seat belts? As usual, it all comes down to money. It's too expensive for airlines to redesign aircraft and replace the existing seats, and the seatbelts are heavier, so if we all had them, the fuel consumption would increase. They don't care that much about our safety. They likely did some thorough analysis, and realised it wasn't worth changing, because along with the monetary cost, consumers seem to prefer front-facing seats. Number 8. Seats are getting smaller. Whilst we're on the topic of money, airlines have a trick of getting the most money out of every flight. And because this video is about secret things, I'm not talking about that overpriced soggy sandwich they tried to sell you. For decades, airline seats have been gradually getting smaller and smaller. In the 1970s, the average legroom on an aircraft was 35 inches. Today, it's just 31. And the width of an average seat has decreased from 18 inches to about 16 and a half over the same period. That means more seats on the plane and more dollar for the airline company. Hey, it's sad, but at least you'll feel a bit more reassured that it's not just you getting fatter now. It also means that we indirectly get cheaper flights, so we can't exactly have it all. Number 7. Staff Sleeping Quarters Ever looked up to find your air host or hostess and not been able to see them? You start to think they're avoiding you because you're asking for your 11th glass of water, perhaps. Well, maybe they've just gone to sleep. On long-haul flights, extra crew are employed so other members can rest, and they have special places on the plane to do it. There are usually stairs at the front and back of the aircraft that lead to very small staff sleeping quarters. Sometimes they have windows and small TVs, sometimes they do not. They're often described by cabin crew as being like sleeping in a coffin. It still sounds better to me than 31 inches of legroom though. Number 6. Hard Landings we all know what it feels like to end a plane journey with a really abrupt hard landing. It's pretty horrible and a lot of people tend to think it's due to the pilot's carelessness. Come on, I know you've tutted and cursed before, but really, you should probably be thanking the pilot for the hard landing, because in some situations, if they didn't do it that way, you wouldn't get to land at all. If the runway was wet, a plane has to touch down hard to break the seal of the water. If not, there could be a loss of traction and the pilot could lose control of the plane altogether. And that's not the only reason. Some airports have really short runways, so the pilot has to land abruptly, or else the plane is going to glide right off the end. So instead of tutting at the pilot next time, just be thankful he knows how to land a plane. Number 5. Aisle 13 now, you wouldn't expect the brain box scientists behind aircraft design or the high-flying decision makers of the airline companies to be superstitious, 
would you? It's not like you're trusting them to put you into a ginormous heavy hunk of metal and fly you around the sky in it. Well, it turns out they do have one superstition. Many planes don't have IL-13. These include planes of Air France Iberia, Lufthansa and Ryanair. And some airlines also don't have IL-17, because IL-17 is considered unlucky in many countries like Brazil and Italy. Most airlines say it's not because they are being superstitious themselves, but because they're aware some passengers find the idea of sitting on row 13 unlucky, so they've left it out for customer service reasons. So if you are superstitious, and you're sitting in row 14 on your next flight, just remember that you're still really sitting in the 13th row. Ooh. No, come on guys, I think the chance of row 12 and row 14 making it to the destination, but not row 13, is pretty slim. Number 4. Missing life jackets. I bet you, like me, totally ignore the safety announcements when the cabin crew give them out at the start of the flight. Right, we've heard them all before. You know what they're going to say. Well, if you do one thing the next time you fly, do at least listen to them when they tell you where your life jacket will be, and check it's actually there. Apparently, there's a real problem with people stealing life jackets to keep as a souvenir. So, you're going to want to check that the person who sat on your seat before you wasn't that type of person. I know the souvenirs in the airport can be expensive, but a life jacket? Seriously? Number 3. Hidden Equipment This one might make you feel safer, or make you feel worse. The staff on board have a whole range of hidden equipment available to them, designed with your safety in mind. However, the thought of them needing to use any of these things is fairly unsettling. Most planes are equipped with, get ready, handcuffs in case of unruly passengers, defibrillators in case of cardiac arrest, cabin and cockpit surveillance cameras in case of hijack, fire extinguishers in case of fire, obviously, and axes to rip through panels and sidewalls in case of electrical fire. Wow, feel safer? It's best to be prepared. But no, with the amount of angry passengers out there, I don't feel safer either. Number 2. Grab Handles now, this is one of those things that you may have thought was unimportant, but it's actually there for a reason. Right next to the doors of an aircraft is a large, sturdy grab handle. They're there for cabin crew to hold onto whilst they're manning the doors and allowing passengers out the plane and onto the emergency slide during an emergency landing situation. Why would they need that? Well, it's in case of panic. Passengers are likely to push and rush to get to the door and out of it, and in the crush, there's a real concern that a flight attendant could simply get pushed out of the door and down the slide. So this handle is there to help them stay where they're meant to be. And this panic is why I've decided to put these handles so high up the chart. They're a symbol of something else. Airlines are really scared of the panic that can ensue during a crisis situation. You've seen the movie Airplane, right? Well, they're so keen of avoiding this problem that you as a passenger might be the absolute last to know if anything's gone wrong. You might have even been in an emergency situation. You probably wouldn't know. Let's move on before we all get scared. Number 1 no tracking system. Okay, sorry guys, but this one is not going to make you feel any better about flying. Have you ever wondered how a plane can go missing? So many plane situations over the last few years remain complete and utter mysteries, which seems pretty weird, because surely planes are being tracked all the time. Well, sorry to break this to you guys, but no, they're not. In spite of all the modern communication equipment that today's aircraft have, when they are out at sea, they are actually not being tracked by radar. It seems kind of hard to believe, but it's true. There's usually a radio connection that allows aircrew to stay in touch with other aircraft and with traffic control, but it's not being tracked by radar all the time. It's just a glorified walkie-talkie. So the next time you fly, if you're not too petrified to fly again, let me know in the comments below if you notice any of the things mentioned in this video. And if you're feeling really brave, don't forget to give our other video on this topic a watch. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to this channel and click that bell icon to stay updated. Thanks for watching.